How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Benji's Logs and Whatnots. We are back at it again for another episode. And I'll tell you what, this rainy weather has certainly set in for the time. What else is there better to do than head into work for a five hour shift? That's exactly what we're gonna be doing today, or at least in this part of the video. Gonna go in, do what we need to do, and then head off home. And then tomorrow night is going to be the four till nine. So yeah, we'll see how it all goes. There is a few more additions that we've got for any form of camping, which I'll be showing you guys. Uh, why? Why not? But one of these particular things is something that I've been wanting for a very long time. Didn't realize how big it was gonna be, but it's still gonna be a lot better than taking 10 gazillion different things for any form of camping and it's got nothing to do with the camper it is primarily something that we can take if we're going and hiking somewhere or whatever it may be we're really gonna have to consider what we need to take when we use this particular piece of equipment but anyway we'll figure that out in some point in the near future so we'll get this day started and done so without further ado guys let's go so it looks like this rain's going to be around for some time guys it's almost 12 o'clock it's 11 38 at the moment so the whole time that we're going to be inside 12 till 5 is going to be relatively wet but that's all right we're not going to be bothered by it but it looks like it's going to be going all night up until tomorrow morning i'll have a look at tomorrow's uh forecast but yeah, that's how it's looking at the moment. It's still gonna have this miserable looking bloody weather. I'm also hoping that Friday's gonna be clear so that we can, uh, as you would say, go fishing for the day. Cause we do have some bait and there are some other things that we wish to use. So we do wish that the weather's gonna be nice and clear, nice and sunny. But again, I'll have a look at the date on then, which is what, today's Wednesday. This part of the video is Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday. And then uh, we'll have a look on Friday, see how we go. I want to try something different, something that I haven't really tried before. I'm not going to tell you guys until the video comes out, but yeah, it's going to be something different, something that we've been wanting to do for a long time. We do have it in the tackle box, but we'll take other, um, other things with us to accommodate for such things. But yeah, we'll see how it all goes on the day if the weather's any good. Oh, jeez, still coming down. It's wet, wetter than a slippery side, guys. Oh my God. Biggest problem about uh, parking as far as away as we have, probably gonna get a little bit wet, but that's all right. I've got a hood for a reason. I'll tell you right now, I saved my bacon quite a few times. Well, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, and yeah, we're pretty, I wouldn't say soaked faces, glasses are. I don't know if you guys can really see that on the camera. Yeah, you can barely see it, but. <sighs> oh well, home time. A little bit earlier than I expected too, which is a bonus. I was originally meant to start uh, stay until five, but it's currently quarter past, quarter past three, so even better. And hopefully the schedule doesn't change in between now and tomorrow morning because we do start at 4.15 tomorrow. So I'm a happy, happy boy. Get to sleep in in the morning and have Friday off, come in on Saturday, that's it. And off Sunday. That is a beautiful thing. So here it is guys, the Hennessy Hammock Safari XXL. I didn't realize on how big the packaging is. So it's probably about two hands high by one and a half in width. And then it's pretty, then it's probably hand width. But uh, this thing will hold up my weight. That's why I bought the Hennessy Safari XXL. I was doing a bit of research about these hammocks 
Uh, the main reason why I wanted to get it is two reasons. Well, three reasons, but we're going to go with two for the now. First reason is it's got its own little tarp on it over the top. Uh, with the hammock itself, it's got a little fly net. So that fine little meshy stuff that you can put around yourself to stop the midges and mosquitoes and flies and everything else in between from getting attacking you during the night because no one you're no one you're lucky if you don't have that fly net uh, you're gonna wake up with big welts on your face and that's not gonna look good the only reason why I bought this particular one is it's good for about 159 kilos that's about 350 pounds thereabouts give or take a few pounds the only reason why I bought this is because as you guys know I'm a pretty big boy um, 135 kilos or 300 pounds if you will so yeah that's why I bought this big boy and if I if and when I decide to lose weight I'm still gonna keep this regardless because it's gonna have its many uses in the future um, such times as if I can't um, take the van or trailer to wherever we're going if we want to be more connected to nature then we got this thing another reason why we decided to buy this particular thing is I'm sort of sick and tired of getting on and off the ground it gets very difficult after a certain amount of time at least with this thing the hammock it's gonna be a lot easier because you can set it up to about eye height if not a little bit higher and I did say on the back roughly where to set it so it says 170 to 210 centimeters so I think I'm about 175 178 thereabouts I think well I'm about 5859 five, so that's roughly about probably eye to just a little bit over my head with the straps and then with the tarp itself the canopy it's saying about five to six meters so that can't be bloody right no okay so it's saying in between the two trees it should be about five to six meters between the two trees so it's not saying five to six meters up it's saying five to six meters between the trees Ooh. it's kind of cool as well it's got a little diagram just down here so it's saying don't lie in the direct line but sleep more sideways kind of 30 degrees off center and it's also got another diagram here on roughly what needs to get done so like I said between the two trees should be about five to six meters and height in general should be anywhere between 170 to 210 centimeters it's kind of cool as well because it's got a diagram here as well for obviously the tree straps which are those how to tie it down here but I'm hoping there's some form of instructions in this thing to help us out for when we tie it so as you guys can tell as well it is that army green I don't mind I'm not fussed on having blue or green or orange or anything else in between I don't mind the color green but uh, yeah that's basically what it is. I think that there might be the hammock itself, and that there's quite, sort of like the um, like strapping. It feels like the strapping's in that, and that's sort of like the uh, tarp that goes over the top. I'm hoping that it's all connected to one thing, so at least that way we don't have to try and strap 20 gazillion different things into the one knot. Have it all set up in one go cheering we would be very happy with that or even if it's just a clear night don't want to put the towel up up we can just have the hammock set up and then off we go the only problem is because of the size of the size of this it's probably going to be a bit difficult to get it into that 60 or 75 litre bag that we've got sitting just there right up there i wanted to get rid of the bed or the mattress out of it the other tarp that we've got and then move a few things around and everything else in between. Main reason why we bought this, I believe I've said it before, I just don't want to be getting on and off the floor, and I don't want to be carrying 20 gazillion different things. Tent, tarp, pegs, hammers. At least with this thing, find two decent trees, 
we'd be cheering. The biggest problem that I currently have, guys, is we've got nowhere to set this thing up in the backyard to give it a whirl. So, we used to have a tree just there. We've obviously got that big one just there. So, that would have been a perfect little spot. And if you have a look in the backyard here, guys, we've got absolutely nothing. Not even over here. We could probably, if there was no metal pole there, we could probably set it up right there. But, uh, yeah. We don't have any space for, uh, for the hammock to set up out here, so we can't practice on getting it up um, out the back here before we take it out anyway. Mind you, it says that it takes about three minutes for it to set up. Probably take me about five, ten, twenty, half an hour to set it up to figure it out. But uh, yeah, uh, we've got no way of practicing here. So once we get a few days up in sleighs and the weather's not so disgusting, we should be able to take it out and spend a night out somewhere because we're itching to get back out there. I'm uh, uh, starting to feel a little bit deflated, if you know what I mean. A little nature therapy would be perfectly fine for this situation but for now we'll uh, just have to wait and see what days we are working next week because we would we did notice that we've got about three days so it's like uh, Friday Saturday Sunday so I'm kind of hoping that uh, we still have those days off so we can go out and do what we need to do so the plan is very simple guys tomorrow we're gonna have a bit of a fumble around with that bag of ours so if we can fit it in somewhere somewhat decently and try and make a little bit of extra space in that bag so that we can potentially take some canned food or other stuff with us, uh, possibly water if need be. That's a tomorrow thing, so for now, we just gotta get uh, tonight's little shift done. We are doing the 4.15 to 9.15 tonight, which isn't too bad. It's only 3.58 at the moment, so in the next couple of minutes I'll walk over to work and then we'll uh, start the night shift get it all over and done with and then once we're done we'll be on our merry way home and everything else in between so yeah uh, did have a bit of a chance to do it today but I kind of just wanted to sit and relax for a little bit and then uh, once we've done what we needed to do at work we can just yeah do the rest of it tomorrow that we've got we can put in this bottom pocket which is where the sleeping bag is which is probably going to be the most logical simply because this thing is about two kilos or about four and a half five pound something like that and I'll put that down in the just here yeah the accurate poundage of this hammock because we've got this now there's gonna be two things that we're not gonna have need in this bag and that is the tarp and the sleeping mat but don't worry I'll still be using those at other given times where there isn't enough trees to accommodate the hammock. All right, let's have a look and see what we can do. Rearrange this just a wee bit. Let's see if it fits in this bottom pocket. And if it does, we'll leave it in the bottom pocket. At least that way you keep the weight low down to the bottom. Looks like it might fit, guys. Yeah, look at that. Fits in beautifully. So I reckon we'll leave the hammock in the bottom. At least that way, all the weight's going to be down the bottom. We're not going to have 
to stress too much about uh, rearranging up here, but then again, we're going to have to rearrange up in here anyways. Remove a couple of things from there so we can at least put the sleeping bag back in there. All right, so let's have a look inside here, see what we can take out and everything else in between because there's a few things in here that we're going to need to rearrange to get the sleeping bag back into the very bag. But this thing right here is not going anywhere because if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need to put first aid on yourself, one of those is always a handy thing to have. So I'm going to keep, uh, yeah, keep that in there. So I'm not going to need to keep the mat in there. I'm not going to need to keep the tarp in there. So they're going to be fine. Oop, I don't want that to happen. The problem is, sleeping bag still takes up quite a bit of space in here. So we'll have to figure out what we're going to do in retrospect, whether we're going to lie it down sideways or have it sitting up like so and we can just shovel everything just in that little spot there which I think might be the best option. I think this is going to take a little bit of time to uh, figure out how to really put this all back together in such a way that it saves a bit of space so that we can put potentially food and that everything else in between whenever we decide to use this um, might have to rearrange the very bottom and see if we can uh, put those pots and pans sort of instead of sideways like that put them flat like that because at the moment I've got a little bit of uh, TP and there's a little blanket no not a blanket a uh, towel <clears throat> just in case we get a bit wet and obviously the sleeping bag's still sitting up like this, not like that. So that in retrospect, what I want to do is I want to try and have it sitting like that. So what we've done is we've put some stuff into this front pocket, especially the little pouch that we've got for uh, fire start and stuff. It's just a little uh, survival kit thingy, my bob. Uh, that I got off uh, Zachary Fowler that will come in handy at some point it's got like little fishing hooks and whatever else in it but I'll do another video about that at some other point but uh, now that I've put an extra piece in here we should have a little bit extra space up in there alright so I think I've pretty much made as much space as I possibly could uh, made sure that the pots and pans are down like that all the gas cylinders were beside it and then just work my way out from there I did put the sleeping bag down like that and pretty much put everything else that we needed in there so we do have a little bit of space up the top here for a little bit of food or if we need to we can just pull it out put some food down the bottom which is probably going to be a good idea for this but uh, yeah I think we're pretty much satisfied with that at this given time I did move a couple of things around, um, some fire start and stuff back in the front pocket, uh, the little survival pouch down the side, and uh, one of those one litre filter bottles. And it's a little soft rubbery plastic thing that you can fill up with water and it's got a filter tap on the top about that big. So I think I'm pretty satisfied with how it's come out. Sleeping stuff down the bottom, but then again I'm probably going to pull this back apart and really do an overhaul on it but at this given time that is pretty much what we got planned for this bag uh, we are going to use those at some point not sure when but we'll use them again at some point uh, especially if we're going to be using a tent we'll use that little plastic one because a uh, little plastic mat because that seems to work wonders for whenever we go camping so it looks like we found a slightly better solution for uh, the space that we've got in the bag uh, What we've done is we've laid the sleeping bag down like this and in front of it at the front of the bag We put the gas cylinders along the front of that. So it has made a little bit more space. I must admit 
it's fun doing this sort of thing, I will admit. So let me just give you guys a quick squeeze of what I mean by putting the gas cylinders at the very front and then a sleeping bag on the lower back. So as you guys can see, got the little gas cylinders here, which are those green cylindrical things. And got the sleeping bag right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the pot, pots and pans here, and then I'm probably gonna lay the rope, all that uh, green cordage that I've got over there. Probably don't need it, but can never go anywhere without it. So I'll lay that on top of the gas cylinders, and then yeah, we'll load up the rest of the stuff like that and the first aid. So it is looking like there's going to be a bit of space in this bag after all, which is a bonus for us because yeah, we like to try and conserve as much space as possible. So load it up and give you guys a final, final look at it. Uh, as you guys can tell, it is pretty much packed up to the way that we like to have so beneath all this stuff is the sleeping bag gas cylinders and a little bit of rope so i've got the pots and pans just here the tp and the towel over here just down in here somewhere is a little pillow and a first aid kit and as you guys can tell that has made up a bit of space up the top here so we can easily put our batteries um food spare pair of socks undies and possibly something else but at this given time that's pretty much all we want to do we are pretty much happy satisfied with the outcome got the sleeping arrangement down the bottom and everything else inside pockets front pockets top pockets and everything else in between uh, we do have some life straws in there as well uh, two of them to be precise so got that in the top and we did put that little survival uh, pouch that we showed you before in the side so very satisfied with that guys very satisfied with the purchase of that uh, hammock it will do come uh, will come into good handiness in the future because uh, all in one get off the ground can use it for multiple things uh, basically a little uh, rain cover seat bedding it's pretty much the three things that you can use for it uh, I've always wanted one, and now I found one that's going to hold up my weight of 350, uh, 300 pounds. Very satisfied, guys. So after a little bit of thinking, guys, I think I'll take that little sleeping bag out, simply because it's like uh, wearing a glove or some other thing that you can put on a certain appendage of the body. And it only comes up to about possibly there and it's basically skin tight the whole way up there's literally no room to move it's okay if you have the thing open but yeah it's honestly way too small for what we need for it um so i dare say we're probably going to use one of the big ones that we've got down in the shed uh simply because it's a lot bigger twice the size if not bigger and there is a little bit of room to play around with it so I'll have to figure out where we can put that, whether or not we'll have to put it in one of those waterproof bags. But, uh, yeah, at least, at least with that, it'll give us a little bit of, a uh, little bit of space in the bag to put some food and whatever else in there, clothing if we needed to. But don't get me wrong, there is a little bit of space in there, regardless of space. Or the size of the sleeping bag next little step is to figure out the time that we can go and use this new uh, camping equipment uh, we would love to uh, do it next week if we could just to give it a trial run uh, we are going to get some more stuff for it um, some stuff to help with tying it onto the trees and whatever else um, I'm gonna get myself some of those uh, carabines uh, they're probably going to be about that big, which is what, three, four inches in length? Probably half that in size, but from what I've read, they're pretty strong. So I'm uh, going to get a pack of four, because that's the only size you can get. And going to get some of those, what are they called, the climbing rings? They're probably about that big. And because I've seen a lot of YouTubers who use the Hennessy hammocks using the carabiners and the climbing rings so honestly 
for someone who's not very good with knots, that's going to help us out big time with setting the thing up without any problems or anything else in between. But we'll keep on thinking about it, whether or not we want to keep that little sleeping bag in the bag or not, whether it's going to be suffice enough for it or to rearrange it again and see what we can put in there because if we can have the sleeping mat or some form of sleeping mat in the bag we'd be very happy but we've got to consider space and weight uh bag is don't get me wrong the bag that i've shown you guys in the video this video is um rel relatively compact and relatively light um, it is relatively close to the back, which is something you definitely need if you're going to be hiking in somewhere. You don't want such a big bag like I used to have, that big camo bag. Um, it's too far out from the back, and because of that, it does weigh down quite a lot on your back and everything else in between. So there's a lot of pull with that bag, but with this black other one that we showed you early in this video, that thing is very nice to wear so i dare say that we're gonna make a decision by this afternoon whether or not we're gonna keep that sleeping bag and whatever else within the bag or what have you it's well i've got all day to really think about it or a few days at least but either way we can still put things in the back of the car because we won't be moving anywhere far from the car either way for the first run because uh, we would like to go and set it up somewhere and see how it goes with uh, tying it up and whatever else. But anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. I am banging on as per the usual. We'll uh, definitely keep you guys updated with everything that's going on, uh, especially with the camper and with the um, bag. And hopefully in the next few days we can go out and do, I wouldn't say a stealth camp, but let's say a trial run with the new Hennessy Safari XXL hammock um, possibly next week but I'm not going to hold my breath because anything can change in between now and then like I said guys I'm going to leave it at that thanks for being a part of this video thanks for watching thus far and everything else in between don't forget to like subscribe share this video out if you could be so kind to do so that would be muchly appreciative and don't forget guys stay happy stay positive and get out there and have an adventure or whatever you can whether it's fishing camping whatever it may be until the next time guys keep it easy